So it's safe to say there's been a ton of Star Wars games released over the years, some of which were incredible and others that maybe should never have seen the light of day. What the hell is even that? But one game that I grew up with at an early age was actually Star Wars Racer. So you can imagine my surprise when I saw that this was available on the store of my recently purchased PS5. For those that didn't know, I have started another channel dedicated to hunting platinum trophies on the PS5, which you can find in the description of this video. But what better way to get two videos out of one game than to play and platinum a Star Wars game? So with the announcement of Star Wars Bounty Hunter being remastered and releasing very soon, and all of these games making a comeback, I thought it would be cool to go back and check out some of the other classic Star Wars games, and what better place to start than on the 1999 game, Star Wars Racer. Now, you may have a different first memory of this game, but for me, I remember playing this game on Nintendo 64 and yelling at my brother every time he crashed into me when I was like seven or eight years old. But also, for a game I had completely forgotten about, everything about it came flooding back to me like I had played it just yesterday. Well, almost everything. The only thing I couldn't really remember how to do is to not crash into a wall. Luckily though, it didn't affect the results. I still won every single race in this game. But for anyone who hasn't played Star Wars Racer, it is exactly what you would want from a pod racing Star Wars game. And although it is fairly bare bones, there were some really fun elements to the game, which I will talk about in this video. Now, if you've watched up to this point, I have a favor to ask. Just jump down in the comments below and give me your favorite Phantom Menace quote. And while you're down there, why not leave a like on the video? It's free and you'd be helping me out a ton. Anyways, getting back to Star Wars Racer, I think the thing that made this game so good was actually just the simplicity of it all. You had a few tournament circuits, a bunch of different races like Anakin and Sebulba and whoever the f <laughs> this guy is. And on top of that, there were two different ways to buy parts to upgrade your pod racer and upgrading things like acceleration, top speed, handling, and a ton more. But with that, let's start with the actual gameplay itself. Now, if you're like me, lining up to pick which character to play, without question, it was always going to be Anakin, because who doesn't want to hear the iconic it's working quote while you repair your pod from damages, as well as just the incredible design that they had for this pod in The Phantom Menace. So with every race, you have to complete three laps. And once you complete them, if you're obviously in first place, you're going to win. Now, each tournament has about seven races and you unlock new characters as you go. There is one tournament which is the Invitational and that only has four races, making it a little bit easier to finish that one when you do unlock them. There's about 15 or so different maps, but I'm pretty sure some of the maps are exactly the same, it's just that they reverse them to make them feel different, but I could be wrong. A lot of what these maps look like are very similar, but I don't know if they're exactly the same. They definitely feel different, but again, it could just be because the maps are reversed. But again, quote me if I'm wrong down in the comments. During the races, obviously you wanna be in first place at the end, but before you get there, you have to make it through the tricky terrain of these maps, because if you lose focus or you look away for just one second, well, then you'll end up like this. But on the flip side, if you win and you get all the way to the end of the map in first place, you get to listen to this absolute banger cover of the Cantina Band song, sung by none other than Watto himself. I mean, come on, how good is this? <laughs> Dude, I totally forgot about this. <laughs> Anyways, outside of Watto's singing capabilities, another one of the cool features of this game is the boost and repair functions. Now, anyone that has played a racing game before will be able to understand that the boost is basically like using nitrous, but in your pod racer, and can be the difference between winning and losing. However, the difference here is that if you boost for too long, your engines can overheat, causing damages and even explosions, which could be the end of your race. Now, whether your pod gets damaged from overheating your engines, or just tagging other walls, enemies, or debris around the track, this can be counteracted with the repair feature, which basically just takes away some of the damage you just did, smacking another pod out of your way. 
Oh, and another small detail which I thought was really cool is if Anakin's pod takes too much damage, before it explodes he enters the spinning animation like he does during The Phantom Menace. I just thought that's worth mentioning, I thought it was pretty cool. But getting back to the actual racing itself, one thing this game absolutely nailed is the feeling of speed and agility while piloting these pods. Racing games over the years have attempted to capture this feeling, some succeeded and some failed miserably, but this game delivered exactly what I imagined pod racing should feel like. Now, while most of the races in this game are pretty easy to win, as you progress through the different tournaments, each race does get a little bit harder. Which brings me to the next feature of this game, upgrades. Every racing game has a way to upgrade your vehicle, and this one is no different. But remember how I told you there were two ways to do it? Well, the first way is pretty simple. As you progress through the tournament races, better upgrades become available as you go. They're in perfect condition, but also much more expensive than the other option. The other option is that you can visit everyone's favorite toy Darian, Watto, and try not to be scammed in the process. When you go and see Watto, he might have some higher level upgrades than what you would be able to unlock in the store, and it might be slightly cheaper, but it is also damaged, which you'll be shown when looking at it in the purchase screen. For this, I recommend upgrading your pit droids as soon as possible so that they can repair these parts with each race you win. This is something the game doesn't tell you so much. If you'd not looking at it, you'd probably miss it. But what I did was pretty much after my like first two race wins, I upgraded the pit droids straight away, maxed them out, and that way every time I bought from the junkyard, everything was being repaired as I was winning more races. So that's pretty much everything to do with this game. And while I had so much fun playing it, is it worth playing in 2024? In short, absolutely. It isn't the fanciest game or the flashiest game. It doesn't do anything groundbreaking, but for a game that was made 25 years ago, that's right, 1999 was 25 years ago. God, that makes me feel old. Anyways, this thing has stood the test of time for a couple of hours of relaxed fun and nostalgic memories, which is exactly what it did for me. And I was able to make some content out of it to hopefully either encourage you guys to play it or just entertain you with my absolute pain of crashing into walls for a couple of hours. Now with this video coming to a close, let me know in the comments below which Star Wars game I should make a video on next. Did you guys like the format of this video and should I do it more often? And is Bounty Hunter going to be the next game we cover? Should we do something similar like this with that game while we wait for Star Wars Outlaws? You guys let me know what you'd like to see on the channel in the future. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and may the force be with you always. <laughs> Dude, I totally forgot about this. Ha, ha, ha.